Welcome back to Switch to Linux. The end of Windows 7 is rapidly approaching. What will you do when it dies? That's uh, kind of the question, and that's really where this channel came from. Um, I'm not, and I never have pretended to be, a long-time, massive, backdoor, completely knowledgeable Linux user. The purpose of this channel has been to show people who need to get real computer work done, who are maybe not computer novices, but computer, computer professionals, how to do real work on Linux platforms. And really, for me, since I always plan and plot ahead, uh, for me, I saw the writing on the wall a long time ago, and I said, well, I still run my development computer that I use for my regular day jobby stuff is still running Windows 7. And then the question I had uh, was that, um, what is going to happen when this goes? I either can roll up to Windows 10 and go like all of the other sheeple out there and just accept whatever they want to do, or I can start looking for other options. Now, I had a Mac at that point in time as well, and I was looking at that and going, eh, that's really not a viable option. The work me and Mac workflow just does not jive. So uh, for me, the, the Windows workflow is exactly what I wanted. And so I started experimenting around with different Linux build. And when I found Linux Mint, I was like, this is like heaven on earth. It's exactly what I wanted. Uh, the complete layout, the complete format that I use. But what is going to happen? What are you going to do when Windows 7 ends? So first, what do we mean by end of life? The end of life of an operating system means that they're no longer going to be um, using security updates. It's not like you're going to turn on the computer one day and it just won't start because it's end of life. That's not what it means. End of life means that they are no longer giving any security patches. In other words, you can still use it, but it's kind of at your own risk because the vulnerabilities that are known, the ways people can get into the back door, will be open and available and uh, that might be something like a computer worm like i believe WannaCry was just a computer worm on an open port that impacted windows systems um, or it could be something that is sent to a vulnerability through an email attachment uh, so just be aware that if you have really good um, computer and internet uh, etiquette you generally won't get viruses anyway. I don't actually run antivirus on my Windows computer. Every now and again, I'll throw malware bytes on there and do a quick scan and then delete the thing. I've never had an issue with a virus on my system, never running any virus because I have very good uh, internet, um, uh, internet um, etiquette where I'm not opening random attachments. I have a, a better sense of what I'm looking at. And, you know, I don't click fishy links and emails. Uh, that's P-H-I-S, you know, um, not fishy, you know. Uh, but what are your options when Windows 7 support finally dies? What are your options? Well, on the official page uh, from Microsoft, uh, they do have um, some notice here. Support for Windows 7 is ending, and they actually have a variety of different questions. I have five different things that you can do when Windows 7 end of life occurs. Um, now, of course, maybe six if we include this non-recommended one. Hey, just don't change anything. You know, take all firewalls completely off, attach that thing directly onto the internet, and just keep on going like nothing's ever happened. <laughs> don't do that, guys. Don't do that. Um, but if you want to continue to use... Um, if you want to continue to use Windows 7 safely, you just need to keep it disconnected or at least mostly disconnected from the internet. We should go back uh, after the end of life period. Support is no longer there. Security updates are no longer there. Um, one of your major options is go back to using the computers like we did in the Windows 95 days. Remember that? We only got on the internet to jump on, do something quick, and then you jump off. You got your games, you got your applications. Of course, this doesn't really jive with our modern world, so it may or may not be something that uh, that you can do. Um, but you are always safe to take it offline and use it without the internet. I actually knew a guy, it was a few years back now, but he still ran his entire office, uh, his business office, off of a Windows 95 computer on a little laptop. It just wasn't on the internet, ever. But the version that he used of QuickBooks was exactly what he wanted, and he didn't want to change anything, and that's what he did. Um, so that's always a, a safe option. Um, another option that you you have, I don't, actually, I don't think I have this one written down. Another option you can have is you can actually buy extended support 
Um, so extended support's going to cost you, and I forget what the prices are, but there are extended support, uh, Windows 7 Professional, Windows 7 Enterprise. I do not believe they have extended support for home editions. Uh, but these, you can purchase extra extended support to get security updates. It's just going to cost you, and it co costs you progressively more money and only extends it out another three years. So you have to uh, be careful with that one. Um, your next option is... Take your current system and upgrade to Windows 10. Now, of course, if you click these requirements, it goes right to the Windows Pro links. Um, so that doesn't necessarily help if you are a Windows Home user. But you do have the option to examine if your computer is capable of running Windows 10. If it is, you can upgrade to Windows 10. It may or may not cost you a license. According to Windows official sites, then it does, you do have to cost you a license. Some people in my comments here have said that if you still have that application on your Windows 7 computer and you upgrade through that, it is still free. I don't know which is correct, um, but uh, I've heard, heard both things. Uh, but you may have a system that you can upgrade your system to Windows 10 and keep using Windows in that manner. Um, I'm not a big fan of that uh, just because I don't like the direction that Windows 10 is going and that is why I have chosen instead to switch to Linux. Okay, because it can do everything I need it to do. And this channel is dedicated not to all of the, the back-end geeky Linux stuff, which is I am not knocking that at all. That is awesome stuff. I love that stuff. But the purpose of this channel is to teach basic computer users who want to use a GUI, who need to use an easy to use format, how to do your basic work on a Linux platform. That's exactly what this channel is for, okay? Um, but, and we'll get into that in a bit, but you can upgrade your system. Now, they're saying the best recommendation is buy a new PC. Well, that's very, you know, can we quote that line from, from Iron Man? That's a very good line from a person selling the missiles, you know? Uh, that's a very good line from a person selling the PCs. Not everybody can go out tomorrow and buy a new computer. Uh, and we'll get to that option in a bit. But upgrading to Windows 10, changing to Windows 10 is an option. I don't like that option, but it is an option. And some of you legitimately need to keep using Windows for what you're doing. No problem. No problem. I'm not mad at you at all if you choose to stay on Windows or Mac, whatever else. You can do, use what you need to use. I just want people to know that there are other options, especially when the whole world's going in subscription models and you saw what happened with Adobe doubling the price of their photography pack. There's a good reason to learn Krita and GIMP if you ever needed one. All right, so the next is you actually can upgrade and install Windows 10 without a license. Um, I actually, my virtual machines that I use for testing Windows uh, Windows 10 things for clients, every now and again, I need to log into a Windows 10 and do something on Chrome on Windows 10. Uh, I run them on a virtual machine. You can install Windows on a device and not activate it, as far as I know. Now, the activation prevents you, uh, the, the lack of activation, I should say, prevents you from running your system settings. So everything's going to be turned on to max data collection and you can't do anything about it. That's why that's not necessarily the best option, but if you have to, you have to. If it's just like, I either have to get on the internet and use this thing in an unsecure format or go to Windows 10, you do have that option too. If you can't get the free activation on your Windows 7 license, then you can actually use Windows 10 without activating it. It's just that you can't change the settings. Um, theming, settings, a lot of basic things, all those privacy settings, all that data collection. You're not activating it, but you're giving them maximum data collection and the ability to force ads on you. And that's what's going to happen without that. Um, of course, uh, because this channel is called Switch to Linux, the number five option is Switch to Linux. Now, the reason we're talking about this, you know, earlier than the day before Windows 7 dies, and I have been talking about this over the course of the last six months at least, is that you don't want to just wipe your system, install Linux, and then try and go about your day. You're going to have a bad day. It takes some time to get into the Linux world. It takes some time to get primed. Um, you want to become familiar with what Linux is. You want to become familiar with how to install applications. You want to be familiar with 
some of the software differences. You're not gonna be able to install every piece of software that you want on your Linux system. Uh, but there are good alternatives. So people say, well, how do I get uh, how do I get Microsoft Word on Linux? Well, you don't, but you have numerous other systems that are just as good. I use LibreOffice for everything. I'm an advanced user of it. I'm an author. I write and produce my books on LibreOffice, and they go right to the printers. I just pushed one out to KDP last night, um, and I will not have any problem pushing out to the other systems as well. Um, done it many times, all through Linux. Uh, all on LibreOffice. There's uh, WPS Office. I don't like their EULA, but it is an option. Some people say it has better compatibility with Microsoft Office. I don't know for sure. Um, and I have a video about how to, to make LibreOffice more compatible with Microsoft Office. It just has to do with what fonts are installed and what format you're sending them. That's really what it boils down to. Um, the next thing, um, you know, figuring out your applications. Figure out, instead of asking, will this software run, ask, what software do I need? Like, what tasks do I need to accomplish, and how do I do that on Linux? So I actually have some playlists on uh, getting started with Linux. So if you are new to Linux, um, we have getting started with Linux. So this one is how to create a... Um, Linux Live Key under Windows 10. This will also work under Windows 7. So if you are in the process where you're needing to switch over to Linux, grab an ISO image, follow this tutorial, put that on a little USB drive, and you can boot your computer into that without installing it. We're not wiping out your Windows system. We're not going to mess with your hard drive. We're just going to boot into it to see how it works, how well how well it does. Not every distro is going to work with every piece of hardware. Not every distro is going to work best for everybody. And the great thing, though, about Linux is there's different workflows. Depending on the type of workflow that you want, you have the ability to choose those workflows. We also talk about um, how you can install Linux to external hard drives. Um, we also, uh, one of the things that you want to do is you want to start looking at, I think the five tips to start with Linux here, this one here, kind of talks about this progression. First on your Windows system, look for those open source alternatives and install those on your existing Windows system and then try starting to learn how to use those applications. If you like the ribbon in Microsoft Office, you can put that on LibreOffice now. If you like the old format, if you remember the old format of Microsoft Office, that's kind of the default. I love that old format. I can customize it to exactly what I need with custom options. If you like the rhythm ribbon, you can do that too. All right, but install these open source applications while you still have your Windows 7 machine and start learning how to use those applications so then when you switch to Linux, they're already there. You already know how to do it. It, it will be flawless for you. Um, and you can watch that video for the other tips. The playlist will be linked down here for below. Now, one of the challenges is if you have older hardware. If you have older hardware, now Windows 10 is actually a little bit more streamlined than Windows 7. Uh, so it actually, generally it will work on very similar hardware without a lot of hassle. Um, as long as you can get past all of the hard disks spinning up to 100% for a while after you turn it on. That would be the data collection and telemetry. Um, but with that, the idea is you might be able to use Windows 10, but if you really don't want to, if you're ready to make that switch to Linux, I do have a video for distros for lower end hardware. Again, this will be linked uh, in, the, uh, in the video and, and in the, the uh, description below. But this one here, uh, we look at five different distributions for low end hardware. And uh, what we want to do with this one is we're looking at lighter systems. So Manjaro, uh, Linux Mint, XFCE, MX Linux, Linux Lite, and Peppermint. Pretty much all based on XFCE, which is a very lightweight but very good uh, desktop environment, the way that, that the system is set up. So that is one of the things that you want to look for. And then, of course, if you're just, hey, you have a pretty good computer and you're not necessarily looking for something low end, have a look at my top distros for 2019 where we look at the different distributions that uh, I pinned out as saying, yeah, these are some, some of the best distros that you can look at. We have Arch, Elementary, Solace, Manjaro, and Mint. So those are my tips. What will you do when Windows 7 dies? Start planning for that now. Are you just going to make the switch to Windows 10? Are you going to jump ship over to Mac? Or are you going to try out some Linux systems? If you're unsure, 
it is completely free to test out these Linux systems. Download a few, put them on USB drives, boot into your systems, and see how they work with you. Start ex asking yourself, can I accomplish the work I need to do with these open source platforms, or am I completely married to these software packages? that we know what they would like to do with us. We just saw Adobe do it yesterday when they doubled the price of their subscription model for the photography pack. All right, that's the thing they want to do with Linux, free and open source applications, and you will still be able to get the majority of your work done on that system. Let me know what you guys think. Um, what, uh, what system are you using? What is your plan for when Windows 7 support dies? Let me know in the comments down below. You can help support the channel by having a look at the links above me, including shop.switchlinks.com if you want this awesome sub to the cat shirt. Um, take a look at the links in the description down below, and if you'd like, follow along on these social media to get better notifications when we push a video live. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.